Hey guys, Adam here. Welcome to another episode of On the Couch. Now, I said I probably wouldn't do another review because it was my birthday. I kind of got a little out of hand with the birthday. Neighbors! So... The movie Neighbors is basically Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne are a new couple and all of a sudden Zac Efron and a fraternity move in and they decide to cause problems. And so it becomes an all-out war between the two to get rid of whoever. That's basically part of it. This movie makes you root for Zac Efron. Who's the villain? Not really. It was alright. It's not very funny. It really isn't. There are very few funny moments in this movie. Um, but the biggest problem with this movie is how it does this complete switch to where you're not, where you can't root for Seth Rogen at all. If anything, I found him and Rose Byrne incredibly annoying in this movie. They were talking like each other. Literally talking like each other. It was really, really annoying. Um, and, um, and yet, I just couldn't, I couldn't like them, and they're supposed to be the heroes of this movie. Zac Efron was more engaging and more likable because, well, for one thing, he's actually a better actor. Um, so the big switch to me is basically Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne, tr after, all right, well, let me start off with this. Basically, uh, Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne decide to be friends with the fraternity and they go, on their first night and they decide to party with them. Um, Zach Efron says like look if you got if we're too loud call me don't call the cops. Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne do that like 10 times so they decide to call the cops because they because well Zach Efron's an idiot. Um, so that's understandable but Zach Efron sees it as a break of trust. Which makes you at first side with Seth Rogen. So shenanigans ensues. They decide to get rid of, try to get rid of one another. And of course, they do. They do uh, answer the question of why can't Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne just move? Well, they explain it, but I'm not going to get into it. Um, and then. Uh, one party gets way out of hand to where a grill, at, or I should say, uh, a party gets out of hand after, shortly after, Rose Byrne tricks Dave Franco into fucking Zac Efron's girlfriend. It gets so out of hand because Zac Efron's angry that, if I can remember correctly, throws a grill out, it shoots and hits an old man who miraculously survived and so they're put on probation which you would think is which you would think it would be the end of the movie or they would just find or and and you can leave no no what happens next is Zac Efron goes over to Seth Rogen's house and says you may have put me on probation, but there's going to be many more guys like me. They're going to party really, really hard. So you're going to stay up all night. So that prompts them to try and get rid of them forever. My biggest problem with this is they're on probation, first off. They can't, they can't party like they used to. They can have barbecues. They can have friends over they can't party.
which means that this would have a lasting repercussions for other members of the how of the of the fraternity who decide to join them in the next semester in the next semester in the next semester because it got a reputation for partying too hard to where people got hurt so the dean would have to tell them you can't do this or you can't do this do it like this that much and correct me if i'm wrong all right please correct me if i'm wrong but as far as I, I am aware, and to my understanding, Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne has already won. There is no reason to go any further with this. Zac Efron's threats are empty. He can't do shit. This is where I start rooting for Zac Efron. Because Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne actually start doing shit that would have gotten them, one, gotten them arrested, and two, made them, made this whole thing to where they are complete and utter assholes. These people are just dicks. They decide to flood, uh, to take an axe to the to one of the pipelines and flood the basement they succeed that they the fraternity has no money they decide to uh, make dildos of them uh, make uh, to mold their dicks into dildos and sell them which was actually kind of funny saying um um the um, uh, they and they do a bunch of other shit. If anything, and when they go to get to the airbag scene, if anything, they fucking deserved it. They fucking deserved it because Zac Efron found out from uh, a pledge after threatening to haze him, which he does. And Zac Efron's actually a really nice guy in this movie. I mean, he's an asshole, and a, I mean, he's a frat boy. It, you've seen them in the movies. But he learns from Pledge, who was bribed into, by Seth Rogen, into spying on them and trying to get them, trying to get him to haze, to try and get Seth, uh, Zac Efron to haze the Pledge on a video to get finally get rid of them. They, this, uh, he finds out through Zac Efron, I mean, he finds, Zac Efron finds out through the pledge that Seth Rogen was the one who flooded the basement. He's the one that, uh, put them on probation and all that. Okay, first off, Seth Rogen, why the fuck did you tell them about the, uh, about the bros before hoes plan? That was stupid. Second, what the fuck do you expect when when someone decides to actually when you decide to uh, to do shit like that to someone who isn't doing anything to you anymore? Yeah, he's doing harmless pranks, but that's it. That's all it is, harmless pranks. You push somebody into being the bad guy. Which makes you the bad guy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and and when they get to the airbag scene, it's all it's just like Seth Rogen sitting on something and I can't believe they actually got into his office building. That was funny. Uh, he gets injured. Now I will say this. Had they actually put an airbag in the baby's crib, and yes, the baby's in this. I would, that would have automatically deemed Zac Efron a horrible person. But they didn't do that because it was very evident that he's, he's a, that he's not that type of monster. Well, Zac, Zac Efron finally gets kicked out because he threw a party because, because Seth Rogen tricked them into thinking they were off probation. 
So they decided to throw a party until they found out. That is how... That is how he, the fraternity finally gets shut down. It's because Seth Rogen tricked them into this. Again, they weren't going to do anything. They weren't going to... They couldn't do anything. Leave them, You could have just let them alone. Okay? You could have let them alone. Um, another thing is, this movie is like trying to insinuate, while Seth, uh, Seth Rogen and uh, Rose Byrne are like in their 30s, they have middle age, um, not middle age, sorry, they have um, decent jobs, middle class, they're doing okay. Problem is, they're really playing off that. Z Seth Rogen and Zach and Rose Byrne are like out of touch with this generation because they're in their 30s. I find that very hard to believe when they are so well, yes, they're they're old school. They're they like graduate college maybe in the mid 2000s, mid to late 2000s or um, mid to late early 2000s. And yet they're but they're more dorky than out of touch with the gener with our with this generation. If anything, I mean, if anything, they're they're very they're very much like Zach Ef Zach Efron. Hell, they like they do the same shit. Um, they do kind of the same shit. So it's hard to believe that these people are way old. I mean, yeah, they're way older. But it's very hard to believe that there's like this huge generation gap. It really is. Um. Uh, also, and here's one thing. Like, you've noticed the baby in the movie. Was there really a reason for the baby? Besides it being adorable. Because let me tell you, there were plenty of all moments I gave this movie. Because of that cute, adorable baby. I mean, that baby was all... I mean, they might as well name the baby Dot Warner. I mean, it feels like the only reason why they put the baby in there as to be the motivator to get rid of the fr the fraternity. But most of the time, the baby's not even in the movie. To where I do forget there's a baby. I actually forget there's a baby in this movie. So there was really no reason to put the baby in there, except also maybe to, I mean, besides the all moments, because again, there are plenty of all moments. I mean, the baby was really, really adorable. Even when she was watching her parents have sex, it was adorable. God, that's going to get me arrested, isn't it? Anyway, it's, it just feel the baby felt like, she wasn't needed in the movie is what I'm saying but stay during the credits because those credits are really really adorable um God, I'm trying to think now because uh this oh yeah and another thing when he when Zac Efron finally gets kick, uh finally gets kicked out Turns out he's like he he was so focused on getting the ultimate party for his fraternity that he didn't do any he didn't really study at all like they didn't even have a scene of that I mean they don't really they kind of touch on it to where you kind of feel sorry for him but they don't they don't kind of focus too much on it except for here and there um. He's Seth Rogen finds him at an at working at Abercrombie and Fitch as a door model. He's just standing there at the door, wearing pants. That's it. He's not he's not even wearing a shirt. And that's another thing. This movie really likes to showcase how how physically fantastic Zac Zac Efron is. Okay, I mean he's fucking. I mean, no homo. But you can grind meat on the, on that body of his. I'm not even kidding. Th this guy, Zac Efron is fucking gorgeous. 
they, I mean, they really, they really play this up. I'm not even kidding. To where he's, like I said, working as a door model for Abercrombie and Fitch. All he's doing is standing there wearing nothing but pants with his shirt showing off his chest. And he's still, and he's going through night classes to get his degree, which is fine. Thing is, this is probably the only time I'm ever going to say don't go to school. Be a model. Like, this, this guy could have been a model. He would have, he would have gone, and he would have gone the last lap uh, from, um, against Seth Rogen. He would have. He probably would have been really, really famous as a model, all right. Because he one, he's in fantastic shape. Two, he knows how to hold himself, and knows how to pose. Seth Rogen would have lost, <laughs> knowing that. I mean, granted, yes, Seth Rogen just wanted him gone. I get that, but it seemed, but. Zac Efron would have made something of himself as a model. He would have been really, really good at it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even kidding. I just felt like that would have been funny if they showed him actually making it big as a model. But they didn't do that. So, that, so yeah. They really could have played on that. Um... Uh, oh, yeah, and one other thing, uh, if definitely one major positive I gotta say is this. Dave Franco, you do a really good Robert De Niro impression. I'm not even kidding. Like, I mean, it's not, gr it's not great, it's not, it's not, oh my god, I can actually believe he's De Niro. No, he really put, during the scene where he's dressed up as Robert De Niro and meet the parents, he actually went all the way on that. He 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 really went all the way to look like to looking like De Niro, or a guy dressed or a a teenager look trying to look like De Niro. He did a really good job, and the impression was not bad either. It was pretty funny. Uh, I'm of course again I'm a sucker for Robert De Niro impressions. I'm a sucker for Robert De Niro jokes. Hell, I'm a sucker for Robert De Niro. Okay. God, <laughs> get off my case. Um, so yeah, that's all I gotta say about this movie. It's really, for, it's really kind of forgettable. Um, I'm surprised I actually remember it that much. Um, so final score for Neighbors, five out of ten. I mean, biggest problem with this is you're rooting for the villain. And not the heroes, because the heroes are assholes, are just really fucking dicks. That's all they are. And you know, there's a lot of dick jokes in this too. There's so, I mean, there's a lot of dicks too, like way too much dick in this movie. More, um, yeah, I'm not going go any further than that. Um, so yeah, five out of ten on neighbors. All right, now for trailers. Um, I got that new Zac Efron, uh, or, sorry, Zac Braff movie, Wish I Was Here, which, again, like, uh, my friend, a couple of my friends are gonna go to a New York premiere, so I might ask them if they can do a review for me, and I'll post it online. Uh, I got Guardians of the Galaxy again. I'm still waiting for that new trailer. Uh, I got a new movie, uh, Melissa McCarthy and Tammy. I don't know what the fuck is going on in this movie. I have no idea. All I know is Melissa McCarthy robbed the fast food joint she works at. And she's like, you want some pies? You want some pies? I want some pies. Hey, let's get some pies. I'm just thinking, what the shit? <laughs> what is going on? Uh, got a new trailer for 22 Jump Street. Again, it looks funny. Uh, I'll So, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll end up seeing it. Uh, I got Let's Be Cops again. Just uh, the same trailer I got last week for A Million Ways to Die in the West. I cannot tell you about this trailer. I cannot. And until this movie comes out in like two weeks, two or three weeks, honestly, 
I don't even know if I should tell you to go see this. Well, really, you don't need to go see Neighbors. But just to avoid that trailer, do not go see this movie or any movie until this, <laughs> until this, until this movie comes out. Because the joke is too funny. <laughs> I mean, it really, really is. <laughs> Alright, so that's it. Um, this week I'll have Godzilla.